Okay, in this video we're going to look at something called improper integrals. Now what improper integrals are, um, the integrals that you're used to working with look like this. You might have the integral from a to b, in other words it might go from 1 to 5 of some function and you could find the area <clears throat> under the function using a definite integral. But what happens if that upper limit was infinity? So rather than going from a to some fixed number, suppose it went from a off to a positive infinity. Now graphically, here's what it would look like. We're gonna, the lower limit will be a, so just to put it on a graph, let's go ahead and we'll put a point a right here. So starting at a, and I'll draw a line down from there. So starting at a, <clears throat> suppose I wanted to go all the way off, way out here to a positive infinity. Now the question is, um, what would the area under that curve be? And um, to find it, we're going to have to do a couple of things that you haven't done before. So this is called, if you've got this situation where you're going off to an infinite limit, then it's called an improper interval. And this is one type, and we'll look at another type later on. And we're going to look at a couple of problems in this. We're going to look at a convergent problem and a divergent problem, and we'll talk about what the differences are in those in just a second. Now the trick to these problems is this. You don't have a formula for the integral to infinity. But what you do have, you have a formula for definite integrals. So the idea is to, starting at A, just come somewhere over here and pick some random point B. So I'll pick some specific point and I'll put it right here and I'll call this B. So I've got a formula that the fundamental theorem of calculus gives you the formula to find the area between A and B. And if you did that, you've seen this uh, several times in the past. <clears throat> so what that formula would look like would be this. So what this is going to give you is the definite integral from A to B. Now let's just shade that in. If we were to shade it, here's what it would look like. It would actually be this area in here, and it would stop right here. So if you did this, you would have that area. So this definite integral will give you uh, the integral from a to b. But you want the integral to infinity, not to a fixed number b. So the trick is actually make this a two, uh, kind of a two-step process. The first step is to find this black integral from a to b, and then do the following. Then find the limit, so I think we'll do it like this, is find the limit and let b begin to go off here toward a positive infinity. So actually it'll add a second part to the definition, and it looks like this. <clears throat> so if you find the definite integral from a to b, where b is any number, then if you let b go off to a positive infinity and find the limit as, as b goes to infinity, you'll actually have this entire shaded area, which will include this part right here. So this black part in here will give you this black shaded area. Then when you take the limit as b goes to infinity, it will add this additional area, and when you put the two of them together, you'll have a total area. Now, it may be convergent or it may be divergent, and we'll show what those look like in just a second. But anyway, that's going to be the strategy, is to find some point b, and then let b move way off to the right toward positive infinity, take the limit as b goes to infinity, and you'll have this integral right here. So now let's look and see what some of these rules look like as we go through. Okay, now actually you've got three <clears throat> distinct rules and they look like this. So we want to find improper integrals with uh, infinite limits of integration. Now the first case is this. Suppose you started at some fixed number a and went way off to the right to a positive infinity. That's what this would look like. So <clears throat> what you'll do is starting at a, you'll pick some number b, and then you'll let b move way off to the right toward a positive infinity. Now the second case, suppose you started at some fixed number b and moved way off to the left. So starting at b, uh, pick some fixed number a, and then let a move way off to the left toward a negative infinity. So you can go either to the right or to the left. Now the last case looks like this. Rather than starting at a fixed number, suppose you went from infinitely far on the left to infinitely far on the right. Then the trick on this would be to do this. Pick some middle number c, uh, in between the interval, and then split it up into two parts. So find the integral from negative infinity to that middle number c, then find from the middle number c off to a positive infinity, and then add the two things together. Now again, you're going to run across a couple terms called convergent and divergent, and we will talk about those in a second and come back to see what these definitions look like. 
So let's look at a couple of examples and see what the examples will look like here. Okay. Now what we've got is this. We've got two functions. In both cases, we're going to start at 1, go off to a positive infinity. And the first function will be 1 over x squared. The second function will be 1 over x. Both of them start at 1 and go off to infinity. Now, one of these will be convergent. The other one will be divergent. And these two examples should make it possible, I think, for you to see what the difference in the two is. So the trick is, and again, let's go back to our rules. We've got it going from 1 to infinity. So this is going to be 1 right here. And we want to go all the way off to infinity, way off over here. But to do that, what we're going to have to do is to come in and, using the rules, the rule says, first of all, just pick some number b, uh, evaluate the integral in terms of b, then take the limit as b goes to infinity. So what that's going to look like would be this. Graphically, it would look like this. You're going to pick some number out here, b, and we'll first of all find um, this integral from 1 to b, which will give us this shaded area right here. So it's kind of a two-step process. Let's go ahead and step number one. So step number one is to do this black part right here on the inside. Find the integral from A to B. So what that's going to look like when you set it up, it will be the integral from 1, and we'll just leave it in terms of B. 1 to B of 1 over x squared dx. But just using your basic integral rules, that will be the integral from 1 to B and take that x squared in the bottom, move it to the top, and make it be x to the negative 2. Now find the antiderivative of that. Well, what that's going to be would be, and again, just add one to each one. This will turn out to be x to the negative 1 divided by negative 1, evaluated from 1 to b. And we'll go ahead and rewrite this a little bit. Uh, we'll bring the negative up in front and move this to the bottom. So this thing would look like this. It will become negative 1 over x to the first power evaluated from 1 to b. Now, just go ahead and plug in the two things that you know. So plug in the top minus plug in the bottom. So this will turn out to be um, negative 1 over b minus, and then you'll have negative 1 over 1. So two negatives make a positive. This is going to turn into a 1. And so we can actually write this as 1 minus 1 over b. So this integral turns into this right here. So whatever you pick for b, what that's going to give you will be the area <clears throat> between 1 and b. Now, you want, though, the limit as it goes to infinity. So let's take <clears throat> another look at the rules. Now, the second part is this. Now, do the red part. Take the limit of that answer as b goes off to infinity. <clears throat> so we'll go to step 2. So what step 2 says is take the limit as b approaches infinity of this answer. So 1 minus 1 over b. So you want the limit of this right here. But remember, if you take the limit as b goes to infinity, then this term right here will go to 0. So 1 over an increasingly large number, this term right here is going to go to 0. And it just leaves you with that 1. So you'll wind up with 1 for a final answer. And what this is, this is the integral from uh, 1 to infinity. So this thing will turn out to be equal to 1. So this shaded area all the way out to a positive infinity will turn out to be the fixed number 1. Now, when you take this limit, if it settles on a fixed number, which this one did, then that's going to be called convergent. So if it settles on a fixed number, that means the limit exists, and it's called convergent. So this thing converges on a fixed number. And it looks like that right there. Okay, now let's try one that does not converge. Now when you first look at these, they look the similar. They both of them are 
decreasing, they're both approaching the x-axis, and you might think, well, this one's going to settle on a fixed number two, but watch the difference in the two problems. Okay, and what we'll do on this one is exactly the same process. We'll go back to step number one. First thing we'll do is just pick some number b and find a definite integral from one to b. So what we'll do is this will be step one over here. And again, uh, it's starting at one. So on this problem, this is equal to one. And again, I'm going to go out here somewhere and I'm going to pick some b. And then I'm going to take the limit as b goes way off here toward a positive infinity. So the first part of the problem will be the integral from one to b of one over x dx. But in this problem, it's actually a little bit easier than the last one. Just remember, the antiderivative of 1 over x is the natural log of x. So this will turn into the natural log of x evaluated from uh, 1 up to b. Now what that will be equal to, <clears throat> again, plug in the top number minus plug in the bottom number. That's going to give you the natural log of b minus the natural log of 1. But you might remember from your logarithms, the natural log of 1 is 0, so that'll turn into a 0. So this will turn into this. It'll turn into the natural log of b. So this time, the area between 1 and b would be equal to the natural log of b. Now you're going to take the limit as b goes to infinity, so take the limit as b moves off here toward infinity, and that'll be part two. So the second step says, okay, now that you've got the black part of it done, the red part says take the limit of this answer as b approaches infinity, and you'll have a final answer. So what that's going to look like would be this. This would be step two. We'll take the limit as b approaches infinity, of the natural log of b. But as b goes to infinity, then the natural log of infinity would also go to infinity, so this thing will also approach infinity. So the final answer on this thing is going to be infinity. Now, the way to interpret this answer is up here, here's what it would look like. The integral from 1 to infinity turns out to be infinity. So what this means is you're adding an increasingly large area, and it never does settle in on a fixed number. And the farther you go out to the right, the more area is added to it, and uh, it never settles on a fixed number. So the limit does not exist. It approaches infinity. And the word that you use here is divergent. So if uh, the limit does not exist, then the interval would be uh, divergent. So if it settles on a fixed number, it's convergent. If it does not settle on the fixed number and the limit does not exist, then it's divergent. So let's go back and take a quick look at the rules again. <clears throat> and it really looks like this. So on all these problems, you have to consider the fact, and we'll put it down here at the bottom, um, is the final answer convergent or divergent? So um, if it settles, on a single fixed number and the limit exists, then it's divergent, or convergent, sorry. If it uh, takes off toward infinity and does not settle on a single fixed number, then it's divergent. And it just depends on the problem. And the, it really comes down to, we'll go back to our two samples here, is how quickly does this curve approach the x-axis? Now let's do this, let's move this first curve over and we'll put it on top of the second curve and take a look and see what it, what it does here. So let's just take this first example and scoot it right over here and put these two together. Now when you compare them together, you can kind of see what's going on. So the black line is, um, the black line is one over x squared. And then notice it, go, it approaches the x-axis at a fast rate so it will actually settle on a fixed number, and it will be convergent. But look at the blue line, 1 over x. It also approaches the x-axis, but it does not approach it as a fast enough rate, so it will continue to pick up extra area out here. It will never settle on a fixed number, and 
the total area would be infinite if you could actually add it up, add it up and the result would be divergent. So convergent and divergent really just depends on how quickly the graph is approaching the x-axis. So you can kind of compare them like that. Now one thing that's a little bit confusing is some students will have trouble with is how can you add a, an infinite number of increasing sections out here without having the area also be infinite. So let's take a quick look at just one numerical example that might help you on that. And I would do something like this. Suppose I wanted to do this. I wanted to start with uh, 14.999, and I want to make sure that the exact area, suppose that the exact area here would be 15. So I've got an exact area of 15. <laughs> so how do you add an infinite number of steps to this thing without having it exceed 15? And the trick to it is to do this, is if you, suppose you did this, let's go ahead and add um, point, uh, zero, 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 0.0009. Now, if we were to add these together, then you'd wind up with 14.9999, and you'd have four nines. Now, if you were to add another point zero 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 nine, eventually this thing would go over 15. But if you did this little trick, here you had three zeros and a nine. The next time you add something to it, add point zero 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 nine. And then when you add these together, you'll get fourteen point nine 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 nine. Now the next time you add something, add five zeros and a nine. So point zero 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 nine. And so just keep repeating this process, and you'll wind up with 14.9999999. And you can do this an infinite number of times. So if you did this an infinite number of times, the number would get longer and longer, but you'd still wind up with nothing bigger than 15. So it'd wind up with 14 point, and you just have an infinite series of nines going out forever. Nine, 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 and so on. But the trick is to make sure whenever you add something, make sure that it's beyond the last significant digit so that it doesn't add anything to it. And this way you can add a, a fixed amount to a number without ever having it exceed 15. Um, and that's how it'll settle on a convergent number. So we'll take one last look again at our steps. And it's so really a kind of two-part process. First of all, uh, Pick some fixed number B and just evaluate a definite integral from A to B. Then in step two, once you've got that answer, take the limit as B approaches infinity, and that will give you the final solution, whether it's either convergent or divergent. So there's a look at how to handle uh, improper integrals. Now we'll do a couple more problems here, um, going from negative infinity to B, and then another one going from negative infinity to a positive infinity uh, to show you how all this works.